Okay, so if you are presented with a question like this, that says solve the differential equation, and it is y prime is equal to 2x over y. Now, there was one like this on um, your paper. We did not do it yet because we couldn't do it. Um, but they're called separable for a reason. It's because you can separate the problem. So remember when we're solving differential equations, what do we have to do? We have to... What are we trying to get back to? We're trying to figure out what... Okay. Uh, <clears throat> y prime represents dy over dx. True? True. So if we are solving this, what were we trying to figure out? We're given the derivative. We were trying to figure out the original. Okay, we were trying to figure out what y was. Well, um, x and y are mixed up. Okay, x and y are mixed together right now. So we are going to separate them. Okay, we're going to make sure that all the y's are on one side. So that means any y slash dy, so we need to multiply both sides by y, and then we also need to make sure our x's are on the same side, so we're going to multiply by that dx to move that to the other side. So that cancels there, that cancels there, so what we are looking at is we have y dy on the left side, and we have 2x dx on the right side. We're trying to figure out what y was originally, so we are going to integrate both sides. Now, if we integrate y with respect to y, then that is y squared over 2. Okay? The integral of y with respect to y is y squared over 2. The integral of 2x with respect to x is x squared, and that's where we're going to throw the plus c in. And then we need to solve for y here, so we need to multiply both sides by 2. So we get y squared is equal to 2x squared plus... 2 times a constant is just another constant. Sometimes you may see it with a subscript. It's not a big, huge deal if the subscript's not there. 2 times a constant is just another constant. Um, now, this is where you would look at your answer choices and see whether they say y squared is equal to or whether they have it in square root form. Okay, uh, But either way, it'll either be that or it will be y is equal to the plus or minus square root of 2x squared plus c sub 1. Yes. But 2 times a constant is just another constant. It's, it's, not, going to show, it's not going to show up in the answer choices to c. Okay? It's just going to show up in the answer choices as c. Because you only have to put it on one side, because if you put it on both sides, then it's going to cancel. So we just put it on the side with the x. <coughs> okay? Let's look at another example. <coughs> Excuse me. This says write and solve the differential equation that models the statement. The rate of change of n with respect to s is proportional to... 250 minus s. So that's the statement. We're going to write a statement, and then we're going to solve the differential. Okay, so the rate of change of n with respect to s, interpreting that from words to uh, variables, is dn over ds. The rate of change, anytime you see rate of change, you're thinking derivative of n with respect to x, or s, is dn over ds is proportional to, you need a constant, um, <clears throat> a variation, that's usually k, 250 minus s. The proportional to, proportional to leads you to k. Okay? Uh, now, this one doesn't really need separating as much. <clears throat> This is kind of like we've done these before. We just need to move that ds 
to the other side. So we've got dn is equal to, uh, let's go ahead, no, um, yeah, let's go ahead and distribute that k. Let's integrate both sides. So the integral of 1 with respect to n would be n. The integral of 250k, 250k is a constant. Okay, So that would be 250k times s, let me integrate it, <coughs> minus... Um, k over 2 s squared, right? right. Antiderivative, the anti, okay, k is a constant. k is the proportionality constant. <clears throat> so 250 times k is a constant. So when we integrate that with respect to x, s is the constant times s. When we integrate negative s to k, and I don't know why it's supposed to work for that, and we get the k should come first with the, the constant. Okay. The antiderivative of s is s squared over 2. So I just put the over 2 with the k since so that's part of the constant, and there's the s squared. Which first part? Setting it up? The rate of change of n with respect to s, the n over ds, is proportional to, you've got to throw a constant of proportionality there, k times what is proportional to, 250 minus s. How are we saying 250k times s? I just, k is a constant. So 250 times a constant is still a constant. So when you integrate a constant, you just throw the variable on the end. OK, um, that's it. Okay, that's it. Unless they tell us something else, that's as far as we can go with that to solve that, dif uh, that differential equation. <clears throat> okay, let's look at this. The rate of change of y with respect to x varies jointly as x and l minus y. Y'all's minds have probably about to be blown if y'all don't pay attention at this point because this is a little more involved. The rate of change of y with respect to x varies jointly as x and l minus y. So, rate of change of y with respect to x, dy over dx varies jointly, okay? Joint variation was supposed to be in math too. I don't know if you remember it all, but... I've never taught math too. I mean, I know that I've been in his class before when he has had this as like a worksheet. But anyways, varies jointly as x and l minus y. That is how you would express that, okay? Very jointly, you got to put that proportion of uh, constant of proportionality, the k, as x, so it's k times x, and divided by l minus y. That's what joint variation is. Okay. First one's on top, second one's on bottom. All right, now, this one does need some separation, okay? We've got x's and l's and y's and all this stuff, okay? L is just another constant as well. So we need to move the L minus Y to the side with the DY. So it was in the denominator, so that's nice. We just need to multiply. And we need to move the DX to the side that has the X. And multiply by the DX. So right now we have L minus Y DY on the left side. We have KX DX on the right side. Okay? Just as a reminder, L and K are constants.
So when we integrate both sides, the antiderivative of L with respect to Y, L is a constant, so that's going to be L times Y. The antiderivative of negative Y is negative Y squared over 2 with respect to Y. The antiderivative of kx with respect to x is k over 2x squared or kx squared over 2 plus c. <laughs> Pretty much the only thing that we can do at this point is if you really wanted to, and the answer choices probably will, since two of these expressions are over 2, they're going to multiply the entire thing by 2 to get rid of that. So you would have 2ly. Now the reason why 2 times L isn't just L is because L is a specific constant. It's different from C, which is the constant of integration. Okay, uh, Minus y squared is equal to kx squared plus, and I'm going to rewrite 2 times C as C sub 1, just some other constant of integration. Okay, That's probably about all that's going to be done to that. Okay. You can't, you can't solve for y because you have y and y squared on the right side. So you're, you're pretty much stuck there. Okay? So let's talk about growth and decay models. Okay? A lot of applications, the rate of change, whenever you read rate of change, again, you should think derivative of a variable y is proportional to the value of y. So in, in symbolic form, that's dy over dt. The rate of change of some variable with respect to time is equal to your proportional, uh, proportionality constant times y, the variable that you're talking about the rate of change. Okay. Now, the general solution to that differential equation is if you solved that, it would be y is equal to big C, constant proportionality, times e to the kt, where c is your initial value, k is your proportionality constant, and t is time. 